think Ohio State is at about 261 yards per game for Ohio State. I think the fact that this game in, is in Arlington um, should give TCU a two-point home crowd advantage, one and a half to two. So if you take, like I said, Urban Meyer, the Urban Meyer factor out, and um, I think TCU's got the coaching edge here. I see this game kind of playing out like TCU jumps them and kind of surprises them, and Ohio State kind of, kind of inches their way back and then takes care of business at the very end. I think Ohio State can win by nine points here, but I think 13 is too much. So I, I'm going to take TCU with the points here because I love that home doggy dog. Boise State versus Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State was favored at minus three and a half. It's about two and a half now. We saw Boise State beat Oregon in the bowl last year, um, and that was a big upset. And then we were high on them coming into the season. Everybody has been. But I didn't see the Broncos um, busting into the top 20 this quick. I think um, it's well-deserved how they took care of business against Troy and at home against UConn, but they're averaging 6.9 yards per run and a 216 passer rating. It's pretty phenomenal. Uh, even against bad teams, you still got to give them credit. And Troy's not that bad. They went all the way across the United States to Troy and did that. Oklahoma State, on the other hand, has taken care of their business. They've been beaten down on scrubs as well, scrubs of the South, um, but they're very inexperienced when it comes to playing good teams. So, this game comes down to Boise State's returning production, in my opinion, and quarterback experience. Brett Rippon from the Broncos has played in multiple big games, multiple bowl games. Taylor Cornelius has not. I like the Broncos by three here. So Boise State is a plus three and a half and money line sprinkle for me, where you can just bet the money line if you wish. I like Boise State to outright win this game uh new mexico new mexico state's premium lsu versus auburn minus 10 now this is not a strong one for me but i do like it lsu has had a great start beating up on miami auburn has had a great spot uh start beating up washington some serious flat spots in that game but um how different are really these teams lsu you know, seems to kind of pick, pick up some more swagger with that quarterback, Joe Burrow. You know, they got some swagger now, right? And I think Joe Burrow's got a chip on his shoulder not making it at Ohio State. Um, their defense has been allowing only 1.9 yards per run and 4.11 yards per play. Auburn still has Jared Stidham, right? He's awesome. And a very good defense allowing only 2.2 yards per rush and 4.67 yards per play. You know, they each played a tough game, LSU, or a tough team, I mean, but LSU did better against uh, Miami than I would say Auburn did against Washington. But I have to go fact, back to the fact that, you know, my initial handicap about Auburn, they only returned one offensive lineman from last year. And I don't like that against a Dave Aranda defense. All right. I think Dave Aranda is going to get to this team. I know they're banged up on defense a little bit, but this is LSU. They're a reload-type team. I like Auburn by six here, so I'm taking the 10 points. LSU plus 10. Notre Dame versus Vanderbilt. The over-under is 52. So we know that Notre Dame beat Michigan, right? And the next week they had kind of a letdown versus Ball State, only scoring... 24 points but uh was this a letdown or was or is it kind of like notre dame just as the same on offense when bush 50 percent completion um you know his passer rating right now is at 119 that's low for college they're only rushing 2.8 yards per carry up to this point because they lost those big linemen last year nelson and tackle i think that you know i think this was a little bit of both ball state is a decent team a little bit disrespected probably they're fifth in returning production but i also think that notre dame isn't what they all are on offense 
But on the other hand, Vanderbilt, you know, they haven't played anyone big yet, but their defense is stopping the run and the pass, only allowing 3.97 yards per play. So, you know, Vanderbilt's, Vanderbilt's been known for defense. I don't think they're going to score much this game. Notre Dame allows the same, 3.95 yards per play. So I think Notre Dame's monster defense that returned 96% of production will hold Vanderbilt to 13 points or less. I love the under 52 here. I love that. Now, if you want to take the 14 and a half, a lot of people, it looks like the Sharps are on Vanderbilt's side. I'm not laying that with Notre Dame for sure. And I'm not even sure if I want to bet against it, though. This could be a 20 to 3 type game. So, but I love the under 52. And that's what we're going with here under 52 Notre Dame versus Vanderbilt. Buffalo versus Eastern Michigan. Plus five is Eastern Michigan. Um, it's actually in Buffalo this game. So, um, I'm still riding the buffs from last year. They were nine and three against the spread. And I'm not going away from that yet. They're 10 and three versus FBS opponents. The last 13 games, they didn't quite cover their first game against an FCS school, but it was close. It was, they won by 38 instead of 40. So, I mean, big whoop. I think that, uh, Eastern Michigan is a perfect time to fade now that they beat Purdue. This is a perfect letdown spot for Eastern Michigan. And what's funny is Purdue actually had 60 more yards uh, than Eastern Michigan. So, you know, Purdue still should have won this game, and they kind of fumbled it away. Eastern Michigan is allowing seven yards per run this year, seven yards per rush. That's a, that's a lot. I like the buffs here by seven points, okay? It's not like the biggest play, but... I think this this is going to be a pretty low scoring game, and uh, my play is Buffalo minus five points. Now I'm going to go through a, a couple more picks. I'm just going to throw at you. I didn't um, Georgia Southern versus Clemson. There could be some weather in this game. Uh, Clemson is you know just kind of got done. In a tough game at Texas A&M, only won 28 to 26. This is kind of a let down, let loose, don't get injured type spot. You know, I think Clemson's going to beat this team by a lot. They got Georgia Tech next. They're going to start preparing for the triple option here, obviously, because Georgia Southern runs the triple option, and so does Georgia Tech. But um, I, I, I can see this game being wet, rainy. Georgia Southern might sneak a touchdown here. Clemson's happy to run out the clock. They're not going to do anything stupid. I'm taking Georgia Southern plus 34. Um, I believe there's. I'm also on the sharp side of that play. Texas versus USC. Huge revenge spot for Texas. Now they get USC at home. And I think when you saw that game last week, when we called out the look-ahead spot, for Texas, it was correct. They only beat Tulsa by seven points. Texas lost to Maryland that first game. Been brutal. Don't get me wrong. Both teams have very underwhelmed so far. USC beats, obviously, UNLV, then only scores three points against Stanford. I believe Texas is licking their chops here. Um, you have a very <laughs> green offense on USC young freshman quarterback and Daniels. I think they played two quarterbacks last game and uh, very young receivers. Texas is going to blitz this team. Tom Herman knows what he's doing. I love Texas minus three here in this perfect revenge spot. Now, Texas obviously has the, um, they almost beat them last year. They should have won that game, but this is no Sam Darnold, you know, here. Uh, this is no run Jones, they lost, like I said, all their skill positions. So um, you have a, a little bit more of an experience with Ellinger and Texas here. Love Texas. Boston College versus Wake Forest. I'm taking the over 53 and a half. People have been waiting on this because of the hurricane. They decided to play this game, They only, but they did move it back two hours. So it's going to start 530 Eastern time, 230 Pacific on Thursday. They are going to beat out the hurricane here. 
and um, we're going to take the over in this game. And if you remember, we also took uh, Boston College, you know, minus five. I believe Wake Forest is in plays per game. Um, we'll look it up here. I think they're second for the amount of plays that they run. And yeah, 95 plays per game is what they're running so far. And I know there's a very small sample size here, but that's a ton, you know. So uh, going with this over definitely does not, uh, you know, make me nervous. I think this should be done pretty easily, especially if the weather holds up. And I very much expect that weather to hold up. Moving on, we are now ready for some NFL football with Cub fan Danny. All right, we are back with my man Cub fan Danny. He is ready to give us his NFL plays this week. I heard he had a great week last week. You can tweet him at Cub Fan Danny. How you doing, bud? Hey, Kiev. What's been happening? You know, just living the dream here. The NFL has kicked off, and I am loving it so far. Yeah, absolutely, man. You've been hitting the UFC pretty hard all summer. And now it's time to dig right into the NFL, like uh, yeah. like everybody else in this world, right? But I heard you had a pretty good week last week, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I hit on those Bears. That was nice. Uh, went against the Bills last weekend, and that helped out too. So yeah, for the most part, I had a really good weekend. Absolutely, man. That's well, that's great. We I was up on the NFL as well. And you know, normally it starts when I'm high on college and low on the NFL. It's kind of opposite a little bit uh, this this year. So, um, but I'm excited to keep riding that wave here, and I, I think we got some good ones uh, yeah. definitely to discuss here. So I'm a little bit under the weather, as you know. I had all those traveling problems, and uh, you know, good old Wisconsin weather got me in the end. But uh, either way, I was able to in the downtime <laughs> handicap some of these games. And, uh, you know, obviously get right into it. So pretty stoked to do that. So why don't you start and tell me the game you're looking at and uh, let's hear a breakdown. Yeah, you know, uh, it was funny this um, preseason, a lot of the starters didn't play. I don't know if you noticed that, but it was a weird preseason. You know, typically the starters play week three and they play a full half, maybe three quarters and then they're done. But there was a lot of teams that sat their guys. So it was almost a little hard to say, okay, how are these guys going to go? At least you could pick some things up here and there. But, uh, yeah, it kind of threw me off a little bit thinking about it, coming up here, says who's going to be good, who's not, what are we looking at here? And, you know, I, I beginning of the year, I said the Bills are going to be absolutely terrible. And what happened last week, man, that they look bad. That offense is void of anything good. Their defense is just absolutely horrendous last week, right? And they had a great mm-hmm. defense last year, but now we're going into a new year, new year, and boy, they looked really bad. And they got buried 47-3 to against the Ravens, right? And that's really bad. So here's my issue with the Bills, right? Without a proven quarterback or a quarterback with some experience, I, I think it's going to be really difficult for these guys to put up even 13 points a game, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So... You know, they're, they're, the Chargers are coming into to Buffalo this week, and, and they're laying seven and a half, right? And most of the experts, and I'm throwing my fingers up in quotes, they like the Chargers potentially get to the Super Bowl. I've heard it over and over and over again how they like the Chargers, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, so last week they didn't win. Uh, but if they're as good as the experts say they are, they should put up at least 30 points this weekend, right? So I have a lot of confidence in the Chargers dropping 30 than I am – of the Bills scoring more than 20. I mean, look at their quarterbacks, Nathan Peterman uh, and then Josh Allen, right? Peterman was so bad, they put in a guy that's not even close to being ready into the game, and he was bad as well. So for me, I think the Bills are in for a long season, and with the inexperienced quarterback, I think this season is going to go down the hill really fast. So we're starting in week two. We're going to take another beating. So I, I don't typically like laying seven and a half points on the road, 
But in this case, I'm going to take the Chargers and lay in the seven and a half. Yeah, I think.